Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another segment of I oh, have another uh, episode of Insta Vlogs. We're gonna do something a little different, and the reason why I've come back and I'll explain in just a minute. We'll give you time and date stamp. It is 12 hours and 33 minutes into the day of Wednesday, May 28th, 2014. Now, as you may notice, we're starting to come back uh, a little more frequently than we did <laughs> before, so the frequency is gonna pick up. I realize that because we are going from ad hoc notes to a more organized form of notes, uh, it would be more appropriate to start doing the research as we go out, as as to start doing the research as it happens. You can go going from the ad hoc notes into more organized notes, and so I will collect uh, ad hoc notes. I will organize them, and you'll see this here. You'll see the, the going. You'll see the process from uh, ad hoc notes to organized notes. Ad hoc notes are Notes that are just random. Organized notes, well, they're, again, they're not completely organized, but they're more organized than they were in, as compared to the ad hoc notes. And to do this, uh, we bring up um, my, oh, did the wrong thing here. We bring up the, uh, the file explorer on my iPad, uh, on my well, this is actually the smart pad. When they're going to a file editor, I'll use uh, something known as the uh, J uh, Jota text editor. It gives you a lot more options than you did before. And so, what's going to happen in the opening segments of all the instant vlogs? That's where we are now. We're in the opening segment. The opening section section <clears throat> we're in the opening segment of it's the vlogs and what's gonna happen here is this is gonna be a general part where we talk about is the vlogs in general so I'm taking notes on this and I'm, I'm actually putting down here what we're gonna be talking about to a certain degree and then we go into uh, talk about our topic and our topic uh, that we've been working on actually uh, we started yesterday is the IMO talk topic of uh, slut shaming but I realized that we didn't really finish the topic we didn't you know bring it out as far as possible as far as we possibly could so that's what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look go back and take a look at this now again and I'm going to be re rethinking about how how I presented what I presented. Now, if you look at, if you remember what we did, we talked about uh, the, the Hinduism. We have talked about uh, India and the uh, standards in society in India, the sort of the, the moral standards, and we talked about how girls in general. Uh, like drama because this is the entertainment they're drawn to. Now, why they why they, why this is the case or why this has to be the case, I'm not really too sure. But all you have to do is take a look at Mean Girls and, and to uh, understand this. And um, this actually brings some system into another introductory mean another, another introductory point is Mean Girls uh, to understand in general. How girls treat other girls. 
Now, I'm going to save this as my notes are coming along. I'm saving this uh, sequentially. So this is uh, on this is May 28th. So the date I'm saving this as is May 28th here. And you'll kind of have to excuse me here because I am I'm taking these notes as we're doing it. And this is what I want to show you here is I want to show you that uh, the process of going from the ad hoc notes to the more organized notes. So as we go back to what we were talking about before, we're talking about Mean Girls. And Mean Girls, is, again, is even though it was written by someone in modern times, it was written by, uh, I think, what was her name again? Um, I can't remember, but she's from Saturday Night Live. The name escapes me right now, so I'll have to go back and sort of look this up to see who actually did this. But the name really isn't that important because, oh, that's what it is. It's Tina Fey. And I'm taking my notes. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's to be expected. Uh, now, Tina Fey was given a lot of credit for this movie. But the movie isn't actually original. Mean Girls is based off of another author, essentially Jane Austen. When you're talking about uh, the, the, the writings of a lot of the women Victorian authors, sort of the, the, Victorian, women, the Victorian women authors, uh, these were authors in the 1800s who came out of Victorian England. And... The writing was such that it really changed uh, the quality of writing that woman that that, that that was out there, and what a lot of their the work uh, focused on their, their their writing work was the relationship that women had with other women. In other words, it, it was the, the mother daughter relationship. It was the uh, sister sister relationship. Uh, the girl between girl, you know. What are girlfriends and in, in the old concept of a frenemy? I mean, a lot of what you see today in terms of how girls treat other girls, in terms of how one girl attacks another girl, and it's primarily verbally. This is all very Victorian. You can find all of this by looking at the uh, Victorian women's authors. If you go back and just do a Google study on Victorian women, women women's authors. You can actually find out a lot about this. And you can see, as you read, as you read through things, you can see you can see a lot of what, what we're talking about. You know, the, the treatment of girls to another girl, you can sort of that, see that turn way back, way back in here. You can sort of you can you can see what you call, if you want to call it that, slut shaming. And the thing is that these 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 the relationships become rather complex, and not as simple as oh we shouldn't do it. And so this is why we actually have to look into this a little bit more. We have to do a little bit more of uh, a, a study in here. We have to we have to bring it forward more and not leave it where we left it. So we are. That's what we're going to do now. Is that in the next segment, the coming segment, we're going to take a look at uh, and expand on what we did yesterday and look at what's happening today. Uh, and, well, not either. We're going to take the, the concepts that we started building yesterday, or at the last uh, uh, Insta Vlog episode, and we're going to expand on it. Anyways, uh, I'll see you in the next segment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, segues are still pretty much a challenge for me. I still having a hard time ending the segment and moving into the next segment smoothly uh, smoothly and I think it's I well, I'm thinking of you know people say well why don't you cut that out well if you're doing a journal if you're doing a vlog like this and a vlog is properly a research journal uh, you don't cut the stuff out you don't cut the stuff out this is part of the mistakes this is part of the learning process 
And if you're doing a open journal or like a scientific journal, which is also a vlog, uh, then you need to sort of leave these little mistakes in. And eventually, at some point in time, uh, I will get past this. I will have a style to move from segment to segment. And uh, there will not be a need to sort of to go back and cut these things out. But the thing is, you go back and sort of, you can use the older videos as reference for the newer videos. And as I said before, when you're doing research, when you're expanding on your analysis, it's not sufficient to simply take what the person says. You have to look into their background. You have to look at their previous research. How does the research present itself? Do they present mistakes or do they present themselves always as an expert, as a guru? And guru has actually two different terms. Because we're going to go into this when we talk about Stacy Mack healing and her you know, so-called healing videos. Uh, guru is, is fundamentally an Indian term. It, it is a person who is a uh, spiritual guide. Uh, and they uh, offer these guidances as masters, as gurus. Uh, where if you didn't have the guidance, the assumption is you would be lost. In other words, you are lost spiritually. You want to take on the path. Uh, you want to go on a better spiritual path. But you don't know, know, you don't know exactly how to go about doing it. So you go ask and seek a guru. A person, a spiritual person that you see as a guru that will take you in as a, as a student as a as a uh, as a um, as a pupil and this guru will be your master he will be your guide and he will shape your life and spiritual life in a manner that will be so so uh, you know so called beneficial however i say and other people say that but they don't actually go to this particular degree that you should not simply accept what somebody says, but think about what they say, analyze it, understand, seek to understand, have a, seek to have a better understanding. And as you do this, as you understand, go into un understanding these different ideas that are being presented to you, you realize that you actually have to go beyond uh, what you call your standard understanding, your standard writing, your standard. Uh, open discussion. Most standard, most standard open discussion, this is true for IMO, are very superficial. There's not much there. You really do, at the end of the discussion, whatever is being discussed and forever, forever and for however long it's being discussed, you really do have to go beyond this, okay, let's go pick this apart. Let's go see what we can find. And as I said, the one thing that I find was this, you know, these, this, this use this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, she she calls herself um, Stacy Mac Healing, and I read to you her her whole blurb about things. It says healing energy videos, and this whole thing. And she talks about spiritual development, alternative healing. Uh, here, alternative uh, her extensive no her extensive knowledge. In the area of alternative healing and spiritual development, well, the thing is, is that it's alternative. If you if you're a Western person and you have Western ideas and you have a Western culture, and that means uh, anything North America, it's uh, Canada, United States, uh, and anything Europe. That's primarily Western, and and there's an entire school of thought that came out of this. There's a way of thinking a way of doing philosophy. All your universities are based on these particular things. All your schools are based on something known as Western thought. Because this is your environment, and as I said before, your environment affects you. When you talk about Eastern experiences, and this includes the spiritual experience, they're fundamentally outside of your standard experience, so they're viewed as alternative uh, experiences. But the problem is, is that the term alternative is so vague that once you get inside the uh, this whole so-called alternative universe, this alternative culture, uh, you quickly become lost because there are so many options and so many directions to go in. 
it becomes extremely confusing. And I think is one of the simple things you need to understand about Eastern thought and Eastern philosophy is that Eastern thought and Eastern philosophy is not divorced from experience. In other words, your experience and the way you experience things has an enormous amount to do on how you think and what, and what type of philosophy that you have. And the thing is, the reason why this this is you know this is true for if you want to take a look at Buddhism, you talk about meditation. Meditation is not simply something that's simply spiritual, but it's something known as holistic. And you've heard this term from a lot of these alternative groups. They talk about holistic, but the thing is, again, they're coming at this whole holistic understanding from a Western point of view, and the holistic understanding that an Eastern person has is completely different from a per that the the is completely different from a person who is coming from a Western perspective. And this is sort of, the, this is actually what needs to be brought into IMO. This is sort of the more, you know, the more extensive understandings. And, and in this, once we get into this, we talk about these uh, alternative views of things. It brings into a problem now, this whole thing uh, of morality. And morality, if you're taking, if you're coming into a, 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 coming into it from a pluralistic point of view, they're saying that all moralities are equal. In other words, all gods are equal. All religions are equal. Uh, we all believe in the same, you know. In other words, you toss everything to the side. Say we all believe in the same thing. Nothing really matters, right? And many of the so-called atheists believe this because, from an atheistic point of view. Nothing really matters because everything's random anyways. Everything's a concept. Gender's a concept. Sexuality is a concept. Uh, life is a concept. And because these things are all concepts, a, an alternative concept to the standard view is all right. It's because it's simply a concept. So you don't want to consider something a life and you want to toss it out and get rid, get rid of it. Simply say, oh, well, that's a concept. Change how the concept is presented in public, and as long as the public accepts this change in perspective, then whatever you do to this now object that you've changed the sort of, you know that you've changed the concept of is fine because you can now because you've changed how the public perceives it. So in other words, give us go back in history, and this is actually what was done. You have. The socialists. The socialists exist on two sides. They exist on the left as as communists, as people who are more environmentalists, and then they exist on the right who are people who are nationalists. These are people who are more they're interested in they're anti-immigration. They're more interested in large corporations. They're more mechanical in or or in, in, in organization, and they believe that the body and everything we believe in, everything we do, think and feel, is structured chemically. That we are a that we the human beings are, and all and everything around us are nothing more than chemical beings. We are a chemical mechanism. Where the left side of socialism believes that the environment is the overall uh, influencer, and that the environment the environment shapes who we are. So a person on the left will say. We need to correct their view. We need to re-educate them and send them off to re-education camps. The person on the right will say, no, this person is defective. And because this person is defective and it is a, a genetic defect, the only option is to euthanize the person, to get rid of them. And it's this point of view that became very popular in uh, between 1930 and 1945 that resulted in the death camps that we saw in Nazi Germany. The Nazis were the uh, socialism on the right. They were the the, the chemical man uh, based view, and they saw man as uh, a chemical machine. And that when this chemical machine broke, that it was defective, and that the only thing left to do was to destroy it. And that was their view. You could, because you could not correct the machine, you could not rebuild, rebuild the machine, you could not repair the machine. The machine, once it broke, was broken, and that was it. The only thing left to do was to destroy it. And there was no consequence to it because, you know, it was sim you know, human beings were simply a machine, like every other animal was simply a machine. Life was a machine. It was a chemical machine. And the thing is, is that 
this is what we see again tonight when we talk about the issue of abortion. Uh, at some point in time, the people on the left decided that, okay, let's get it, let's, let's convince everybody that uh, uh, the life inside the womb is no longer alive. Let's call it a, 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 lump, a lump of biomass. Let's change its definition. And as long as, because again, life is a concept here, for, for the people on the left, everything is a concept. There's not, no reality. And that's how the environment shapes everything, because there is no reality. It's all open and, you know, fluid. And so, change the concept of, of a baby being alive inside, inside the womb, and say, okay, well, if the baby's not alive, then, you know, you can get rid of it, because there's no consequence, because all you're doing is getting rid of a concept. Uh, the same thing was done with gender. The same thing was done when you approach morality, because anything you anything talk about morality was simply a concept. So what happened is they could now accept anything that anyone said. The problem that sort of has come up now, and this is sort of being brought up more in Sweden, which was very socially open, and as foreign cultures start coming in, and Sweden said, oh, great, 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 bring, bring, bring in more culture, everything's fine. And they started bringing in some of the concepts that they, that these like, foreign cultures had, like in Pakistan, like, like in India, like in uh, the, some of the tribal areas in Africa. They started bringing in their morality. And their morality was fundamentally different from what Sweden expected. They were a lot more violent. There was a lot more degradation of human beings, particularly of women. There was a lot more uh, things that socialists, people who were on the left, who believe in this sort of open concept, really disagreed with. But the thing is, once you accept an open concept of morality, of values, of the open concept of life that you have on the left, you can't object to somebody else's because this is the whole point of being open. If you're open, you can't object to somebody else's perspective, even if it's harmful to you. Because the harm that's being done to you, if everything is conceptual, is nothing more than a concept. And this is actually what, what we talk about slut shaming here. Um, the view in Amsterdam, in a number, a number of the, the, the Swedish courts and the, the, uh, the European courts, is that sexuality is uh, simply a concept, that as sexuality is a concept, so is rape. And that if a person has an open view of sexuality, then rape is no particular big deal, because all rape is is sex. And that the, co the problem with rape is a woman's attitude towards sexuality. The more th th there are, I mean, is the more repressed the person is sexuality, sexually speaking, then the more the person will likely view uh, rape as something bad. The person who has a more open view of sexuality will not view rape as something bad, but is simply a sexual experience. And this is where this has started coming into the common media. This is brought in through what they call the, the left side of Hollywood. And IMO on uh, and Awesome Dips TV is part of this whole left experience. It's part of this open social experiment. This open social ex experience. That everything is social, everything is conceptual, and that because everything is conceptual, all forms of truth, and this includes morality, is fine because everything is simply a concept. So when you start coming down and talking about slut-shaming, it falls really short, the arguments fall short, because how can somebody on the, those countries there say they believe in something or where something is wrong when they have to always say that everything is okay because every experience from every different point of view is okay because it's all conceptual. I mean, if you cannot um, say that one set of morals is wrong or something is wrong from, 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 from one set of things, then you cannot say it for something else. In other words, you cannot arbitrarily draw boundaries around your morality. There has to be something set, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, if you have a very, a very fluid understanding of morality, in other words, your, your, your morality is not firmly set, then when it confronts you with something like this, like slut-shaming, then your arguments all of a sudden fall flat. 
And the thing is, is that this is not simply related to, uh, we're not simply looking at, uh, um, at, uh, <laughs> at, uh, at, at, at what these girls said. We were talking, we can even go in and talk more about uh, the whole issue of consent. And this is a really big issue. This is sort of, uh, it has to do with the, uh, has to do with the um, the issue of Alex Day and he's and and, and the um, I'm just going to take a note on here And the YouTube sex the YouTube sex abuse scandal. Now there's a there's a, a uh, there's a, uh, uh, a YouTube channel that I really like a lot. I like her her channel a lot. Uh, her name is uh, the, uh, her channel is called she's called the Geeky Blonde. I think, from what I remember, her name is Rihanna. And she talks about this. She talks about uh, Alex Day. And uh, the whole issue here on consent. And the whole issue of sex abuse. And this is sort of what comes into call slut shaming and stuff like that. Because the three two is very much aligned. And all you have to do is to understand what happens in society, this happens on both the left and the right. Is that more often than not things are politicized in society. You can look and say, oh, well, and, and then she comes up and talks about how, uh, from a feminist perspective, and she talks about being a feminist and feminism and so on and so forth. And a lot of girls, when they talk about this, start, they talk about how they're feminists. But the thing is, is that the problem is that the feminist, the feminist side, the feminist view, is a very much, very much a social left view. And because they're part of the social left view, they're part of the open concept, they're part of the open thought view, they're part of... of uh, the sort of open morality where morality is very fluid uh, and it, morality can be defined any way you want to define it. And because the view on the left is that sexuality is no particular big deal and therefore neither is rape, that women should just, you know, get used to it, that as long as they understand they, that the things are, this is simply an ex a, se a sexual experience, then there's no particular problem. But, you know, the feminists don't see it this way. They, they have a particular view on it. But they don't act on it in the way they're supposed to act on it. I'll give you an example here, right? We talk about sexual abuse. We talk about sexual harassment. There's always a big to-do about it, particularly when you're talking to a, uh, about a Republican who has supported, support, supposedly done these things. When you go to a, uh, a Democrat like uh, Bill Clinton and you find that he has been repeatedly involved with multiple different girls, and you take a look at a feminist who is supposedly Hillary Clinton, Hillary, Hillary, Hillary Clinton. What did Hillary Clinton do? What did the Democrats do in this whole Democrat group that sort of calls the friends of Hillary? What did they do to Jennifer Flowers? What did they do to um, Monica Lewinsky? They did exactly what the IMO panel said they shouldn't do. Such shaming. It both... Jennifer Flowers and Monica Lewinsky were slut shamed. They were attacked. Uh, then, on top of it, it wasn't Bill Clinton's fault because, well, he's you know he's the president. He's doing what a guy does. High five. Bill Clinton got a lot of high five. V Bill Clinton, after the sexual scandals of Monica Lewinsky, his popularity went up, not down. And then there was this sort of a, a national high five. And the women's, the women group, the feminist groups, the feminist groups stood by and said nothing. Uh, there wasn't protest. There weren't 
protest in front of the White House. There wasn't even a peep out of the, out of the feminist groups when this happened. But you had, at the end, you had a national high five to Bill Clinton. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Great job, Bill Clinton, you know. Hey, you know, the standard thumbs up. And you had Monica Lewinsky and Jennifer Flowers essentially belittled. They were treated as trash and considered insignificant. And the thing is, when this happens, when you get in bed, and this is what the feminists have done with Hillary Clinton, with uh, a lot of the groups on the left, they got into bed with the pornographers like Larry Flynn, who has uh, the magazines like Hustler, who does videos like um, Barely Legal or 18 Plus, where they go after these young, very young women, and their goal, goal in these videos is to sexualize these women. These women are viewed purely as objects. And when there is not a uproar and say, hey, this is wrong, because again, the left can't say this is wrong because their morality is an alternative morality. They don't have a firm standard morality. They have an alternative morality. And when this is the case, any argument that, the, you know, in terms of, hey, this is bad, this is affecting me negatively, the left simply turns around and says, well, that's simply a concept. So what are you complaining about? And I think so what happens, geeky, the, the geeky blonde, the Rihanna here, who has these particular issues about what's happening to her, and because she's a, a victim of sexual abuse, and she discusses this to a certain degree, and talks about what's happened to the other uh, YouTubers, the girls who are on YouTube, who were sexually abused by Alex Day and other, uh, other, YouTube, other such type of YouTubers, and talks about how they were uh, treated... And actually, how the different women, the, 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 you know, the women on YouTube panel was sort of pushed out of YouTube. The problem is, when you're coming from a position of concept, all you have is a concept. So the negative experience that, that, that Rihanna has experienced, that others have experienced at the hands of Alex D and these other YouTubers, they're simply concepts. And so it doesn't really matter. And so when you talk about going back and now and talk about slut shaming, but slut shaming on IMO, uh, they're part of the same left crowd, they're part of the same uh, left social group. If everything is a concept, then this whole thing of slut shaming, the whole thing of calling names, bullying, these are all concepts. And because they're concepts, you can't say that they're wrong. You can't say at one section, well, this is wrong, but this is okay. You can't just go around arbitrarily saying what's right and what's wrong. There has to be some sort of standard. And my view is, and my understanding is, you do it through observation. And this is where I went into India. India is, because a lot of people are against Christian culture, they went against this, what we call the Christian morality. So I said, okay, that's fine. Let's ignore the Christian reality. Let's go to all the cultures that are not Christian, particularly Christian. What do you see as a result of their particular morals? And in Indian society, you will find a very open sexual environment. In fact, you'll find this sexuality in a lot of the temples. You'll find it in a lot of the cults. You'll find it in a lot of the different gods and goddesses. And it's part of their society. And as you start taking a look at that and understanding this, look at the deletes in India. Look at how uh, people, uh, the poor on the streets of Calcutta, Calcutta are treated. Look at poverty in India. Look at the treatment of women in, in India. And then you can see how another alternative culture, how these sort of understandings of morality, how they manifest themselves. And once you have that observation in there, you can now say, okay, wait a minute here. If the morality, the negative consequences of behavior, right, the detrimental consequences of behavior are independent of the moral thought, then that's where your moral boundaries are. But if you never take that look, you never take that sort of perspective of things, and simply ex and simply accept what's put in front of you, then you never get to the point saying, "Well, maybe there's something different. Maybe there's something wrong with the way I'm thinking that's causing the problem." And this is why I say that this uh, issue is not a simple issue. It's not a short issue. And this is why I'm bringing it out further uh, and developing the notes further. And then you'll see that the, for the next IMO video, which will probably be um, either today or uh, well, 
It's probably going to be tomorrow or the day after. And we'll see what the frequency is. That we'll expand on this. We'll go into what the geeky, the geeky wants. We'll go into talk, look at, at Rihanna. We'll look at um, Alex Day. We'll look at the whole the sexual abuse scandal on, on, YouTube, on YouTube in relationship to the concept of the, 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 the discussion on slut shaming uh, from IMO. And so that's how we're going to sort of bring everything together. We're going to start organizing our notes a little bit more and have more of a, uh, uh, bring together more of a co coherent thought to sort of start building a library of, uh, uh, of research that we can start doing analysis on. We can start bringing our understanding forward and start saying, okay, well, maybe this is something more that we need to explore. Uh, so that's about it for now. I think we've come to a, a good conclusion here. Uh, just, let me just save this here. We've got a good, a good amount of notes for for today so that we have something to work on for the next uh, episode, either tomorrow or the day after. And uh, I'll see you then. All right, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.